Hi there, welcome back again. Today I want to show you how I am going to restretch a very large canvas, probably one of the largest paintings I've done. It's six feet high by eight feet wide. So I want to show you some of the materials I use and then how to go about stretching a canvas that big. So join me today and we'll go over stretching a canvas. So here's my painting that's been rolled up on a big tube. It's been on that tube for over 10 years, I'd say. Uh, so one of the nice things with a stretched canvas, if you want to store it, you can take it off the stretcher frame and then just roll it on a big tube. Try to make it a big tube like a carpet tube or something. You don't want a really tight roll. Uh, and then you want to roll it with paint side out. I have paper on the top here protecting it, a layer of paper. But you want to roll with the paint side facing out. The uh, paint will flex better that way. If you have the paint side facing in, it might crack over time. And then you're going to need your stretcher frame to stretch the canvas over. I built this one. Um, if you were to get a custom frame this big, once again, this is six feet by eight feet, uh, a custom stretcher frame would probably still cost you about $500 or so. Uh, I haven't priced it out, but even this, just building this, going to the hardware store and building one, that cost me $80 or $90 to build this. Um, so if you have some carpentry skills, you can sell, save yourself a lot of money on framing and things like that. How I built this frame, I took some 1x3 pine from the hardware store and I made sure it's good pine. You want some of the, the nice stuff without a lot of knots in it and you don't want it to have any bowing in the boards. So I usually sight down the boards like this to make sure they're, they're straight, they're not bending any strange way. So this is one by three select pine boards and I mitered the corners. I used to be a carpenter, so uh, that's definitely come in handy in uh, aspects like this. So I've mitered the corners and then I used a couple pocket joints with screws going through uh, this piece and into the neighboring piece there. I made sure to label all of the corners and all the brackets because I want this to be able to be disassembled. It, it's so big I couldn't even fit it in my van and I have a big van. I had to strap it on top to bring it over here. Uh, so I want it to be able to be disassembled. So there's no glue in here, just those screws. I'm going to reinforce it with some brackets afterwards. And then in the center I took some 1x2. So these are 1x3. And then in the center I took some 1x2 and then made some support brackets. Uh, without that, all the tension would cause these long boards to bow in. So I cut these. I, uh, uh, you can space it out in different ways, but I just separated the width, the eight foot section, into thirds. And then I centered a board on one third, centered a board on another third. And here I used little L brackets. You can do different methods of joining these, but I uh, use these little L brackets to join these. And once again, they're all numbered, so I know which one goes where. And then right down the middle, I, uh, I have this, these separate pieces. There's one there, one there, one there. And so that's just along the center to add some more support. Uh, and then I'll flip it over and show you some things I did on the front side of the, of the uh, stretcher frame to prep it for the canvas. I forgot to show you one more thing before we flip this stretcher frame over. I just reinforced the corners with these L brackets here uh, using about half inch screws, flathead screws there. It covers up some of the, uh, the pocket screws there, but it's not going to hit those screws if you place it correctly there. So that's just a, kind of an added measure of security to strengthen the corners. Before I knew about pocket hole screws like this, before I was a carpenter, I would try to join frames and I would just use L brackets like this. And that can work too. And if you want it even stronger, you can put another one on the face of it and just kind of sandwich those boards between it. So that's something else that you can do if you just want to be extra sure to, uh, you know, get a good strong corner on your stretcher frame. So on the front of the stretcher frame, you're going to need a little bit of a lip uh, right here. If you don't have that on there and you stretch canvas over this homemade frame, and if you start to paint on it, you're going to get little ghost lines where you see the, uh, the paint kind of rubbing along the inside edge of the stretcher frame. So you need a little bit of a raised lip. And this is just, I think they call it screen door molding or something for making uh, slats and screen doors. So it's only, boy, it's 
maybe a quarter of an inch high and it's rounded on the edges so that should be fine. If you can find like a half round molding that will work really nicely as well. And so I just mitered those corners to match the miters on the mainframe and then I have a nail gun or something just tack it in there. I used to do this by hand. I, um, this is not glued. I don't think it needs to be glued but I had glued it before in the old days and I took little tacks and held them with a pair of needle nose pliers and hammered them in. So it's a lot nicer if you have a nail gun or something like that. This was a pneumatic stapler that I used to attach that. Uh, here, uh, somebody here in the studio actually has some really nice heavy duty stretcher frames. Uh, so these are, are great. And you can see there on the front side, uh, stretcher frames need that little lip so that the canvas can hang over it without making contact with the bottom part of the stretcher frame. So to accommodate that, that's what I did here, just using that, uh, that molding along the edge to give a little bit of a raised lip to stretch the canvas over. Here are some tools that you'll need for stretching a canvas. Uh, I probably will do a, another canvas stretching video uh, where I do a smaller one, but I'm doing this large one. I thought you might want to see that process too. Uh, so you're going to need a set of stretching pliers. And this is the set I used all the way up until this year. Uh, so for, for a long time, I used this set of Frederick stretcher pliers and they work fine. They got some good grip and traction on the inside of the jaws. But one thing I found is that the chrome coating, um, especially on large paintings, if I would put a lot of strain on it, it seemed like the canvas still wanted to slip out even with that texture in the jaws. So last semester, one of my students, Emily, she actually did a very large canvas and she bought a, a nice set of wide jaw stretching pliers like this. And these have more of a rubberized or kind of a plastic jaw. And these grab the canvas very well, so I'm excited to try these out. And they're not that expensive. I think it was only $13 or $14 the set I got on Amazon. I'll put that link in the description for you. You probably also will need a hammer because sometimes as you're stapling the canvas, you know, the staples don't set down all the way. But I, for, you know, I basically just have used this little pry bar. This is a little leverage bar at the bottom of the uh, the pliers, I use that as a hammer, but a dedicated hammer would be a good idea just to pound those staples back in. Uh, the staple gun, you can get a manual or a, uh, you know, an electric. Electric is going to kind of save you a little bit of headache, make it a little bit easier on your grip as you staple in the canvas. And then I usually use, um, you know, quarter or five sixteenths inch uh, T50 staples. So T50 those are a nice large size staple and that's going to grab the canvas very well. And then sometimes you'll have to pull the staples out and restretch an area. Um, when I used to work at Hobby Lobby in the frame shop, we used a little set of jewelers cutters like this. These are, you can find them either florists or jewelers will use these to cut wire. So it's actually got little sharpened jaws there so you can cut wire. And what really helps is you see this little bend here. It's not straight, it's got a little bit of an elbow on these pliers. So this is my favorite tool for digging out staples if I need to get them out. You can use a, like a screwdriver and a regular set of pliers, but this kind of is both in one. I can use that sharp point and dig underneath the staple and then grab onto it and then I push down and because it's got that little uh, el elbow on the pliers, it's gonna pop that staple out really well. All right, so we're just about to stretch the canvas. This is uh, Mr. Brian Jekyll over here. He's the man who taught me how to paint and he has very graciously offered to help me stretch this canvas. When you're stretching a canvas this large, it really helps to have an extra set of hands. Uh, it's quite cumbersome. So first we're gonna roll out the canvas on these tables and then put the frame on top and then stretch it. Okay, so we've got the canvas rolled out. We've got the stretcher frame on top of the, the back side of the canvas. Uh, when you're restretching a, a previously painted piece, it's important to make sure that everything lines up so that the paint 
uh, lines up with the edges of the stretcher frame. Usually you only need about an inch and a half of salvage here to stretch over your stretcher bars, depending on how thick your stretcher bars are. Uh, here, I think just because it was so large, I wanted to make sure I had plenty of salvage to grab onto to stretch across. So first thing we're gonna do is start with a couple of staples on the center side of this short six foot side here. And then I'll go to the other side and stretch it across from there. So here with that excess salvage, we kind of have to fold it over to get a good grip with the pliers. Got it there. Next, we're moving to the center of the long side, and we're going to put a few staples in the center there and then restretch it on the opposite long side in the center. So we're kind of creating this diamond of tension. After we've got the, uh, the center of all four sides stretched, uh, the next thing I like to do, especially with really large canvases, is to uh, get some tension on the outside corners. So I'll start from the corners and then pull out, and then after that, we'll start with the staples going from the center and working out. Uh, but starting with that tension on the outside corners really helps keep it from sagging or getting loose. Right here, we've stood the canvas up and we have it propped against the wall. When it's pushed against the wall, that allows you to have some good leverage to pry on the canvas and get a good amount of tension. So now that we've got tension on all four corners and in the centers of all the sides, we're going to start from the center on the, uh, the long side here and put a few staples to the right and to the left of the center point. Uh, then we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side and then the same thing on the short sides, just working from the center out and then continually rotating and just gradually getting more and more tension around the canvas. So as Mr. Jekyll is pulling with the pliers, he's, he's pulling down as well as away from the center. So it's kind of a down and out motion uh, to create this tension constantly going away from the center of the canvas. So sometimes as you're stretching, near the end, you'll get a little bit of buckling. These first staples we put in the corners 
to create tension. They help a lot, but um, as we continue to add tension throughout the canvas, it just uh, leaves a little bit of extra bulk here. So I'm going to pull these first two staples. I'll I might do that on all four corners and just kind of restretch that to get a nice tight corner on the canvas. So this is where these pliers really help. You can dig in underneath the staple with that sharp point and then just push down and the staple pops out. Okay, so now we've got all the sides nice and tight. Everything's looking good. Uh, but to clean it up, we need to fold over the, the corners here. And I usually do what is, I think they call it kind of a hospital corner. Uh, so I will crease the canvas here. And fold it over itself. You want to try to roll it and make sure it's not going to be hanging out over the side and get a nice clean corner. There's different ways to do this as well. I've seen people that will cut away some of that extra bulk, uh, but usually if you're putting it in a frame, the frame will have enough extra space so that bulk won't really get in the way. <laughs> and I just put a few staples in there, make sure it stays down. And I'll do that on all four corners, as well as putting a few staples uh, on the salvage in the back, just to make sure that doesn't puff out too much. Okay, so one of the last steps is we're going to put a hanging wire on the back of the stretcher frame. I'm not going to build a frame for this right now, so I want some way to hang it. So what I'm going to do is measure one third of the way down the entire height and then put in my hanging wire there. Right, so that's how you stretch a big old canvas. Once again, thank you so much, Mr. Brian Jekyll, for your help. Appreciate that. Thank so. you. <laughs>